Maria to read. Cam, uh, can you tell us about the day that you left? Uh, yes, I can remember quite well. I do not know if I knew it uh, all the way till two days before we left. Because I knew absolutely nothing. Parents probably, they knew more than I did. Uh, to me, it was a sudden departure. Mm -hmm. Father was loading in the afternoon, whatever, on, and then he f took two horses, the best ones, I presume. And the others were always already confiscated. And uh, loaded, and then uh, he said, "Why well, I put the horses on and, and drove out of the the property, and we were on the street, and were es escorted by one office, Russian officer and two soldiers. They were walking somewhat behind us. But we were walking also at the beginning. Then all the way till we were, till we were out of Liova, out of the city." And there, uh, the officer saluted us, and they turned back, and we kept on going. And, mm -hmm. and we were already out of Liova. And, uh, and at home, I say at home, I had a, pair, a new pair of shoes, brand new pairs, but they were too big, too large for me. So mother gave me a, a pack of cotton, cotton to put in so in my heels or on toes so that my foot will not be, be somewhat tied in. And so we were on, on the road, and mother's on the wagon there, and, and mother asked, what, what did you do with the cotton? And I said, I left it at home. And mother said, we have no home anymore. Well, they knew more than I did, I'm sure. When they left, did they know where they were going to end up, or they just set out to leave? Uh, not absolutely no. Mm -hmm. Absolutely no. And uh, we spent the night somewhere which I do not know where, because we arrived in Yergara the day after. Mm -hmm. So because I probably fell asleep, was, etc. In Yergara we were at least two, two more days waiting for a train. That was the train station of the closest to Leova. And there, once, I cannot recall how we got into the train, but I can remember once we were in the train. And so the train took off and ended up um, somewhere in the area of Galatz. Were you with your entire family? No, no, that's right. Only with a uh, sister and a brother and mother. So we were the four of us. Your youngest brother? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so father and the two brothers, they went with, uh, with the horses and the wagon down to, to Galatz. So after they have, uh, after once they left, we have not had not seen them at least two and a half months or more, because they, my brother was dead already when father came joined us. So uh, Gallas, we crossed the border. The train did not pass the, the frontier. The train stopped before. Mm -hmm. So we walked across, and, it, and it, there there were barbed wire already on each side, but there were some gates that they or barbed wire, they put aside and let us go just like sheep, you know, letting go through. And so we walked through, but on the other side, and then they closed. On the other side, so we were there. Uh, I did not know, it was nothing, nobody knew where. And some adults, they knew maybe more than, more than, I'm sure more than I did, because Probably some friends came and picked them up, or they went themselves to their friends, or anyway, th that, that crowd did diminish. Maybe it diminished one third or so, because we were a lot, a many, mm -hmm. and then it was diminished, diminished to that. But all this was on the Romanian side already. We were, we were uh, safe from, from the other side. But uh, we could see how far, I mean, it was in, in, the, in the grass, you know, in the, in the, in the plain fields. 
but um, over a couple of nights, uh, we were just a few remain, remaining because some knew where to go, some others disappeared other ways because we there was some some we were free. I think so. We were free to 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 go wherever we want to go. Though uh, quite a few remained, they had nowhere to go. Like in our case. Papers with you, identifying where you were from at all. I personally had nothing, mm -hmm. but uh, parents must have had because uh, they asked, "Where is your husband?" They they looked, you know. So there was some 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 paper, some name, some. Did record. You have, you have your birth certificate, or your mother had your birth certificate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I do not know how it came through, but I had it all the way to, to France. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, right, yeah. Yeah. And here at, in France, they wanted a birth certificate for me to be sure they have the right individual. And so at that time, there was no copying thing, so I handed them over. And I never saw that birth certificate uh, again, which I'm sure they did not need it. They were, uh, and so that's where, 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 uh, where this, uh, and. One, one more, one more question. Do you think you were identified as Romanian or in Reed? How did they uh, Romania. You were known as Romania. Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Because we could not say who we really were. Right. That the Russian, a Russian so, uh, officer told us, or told the uncle, never disclose, never disclose. Because we knew the, both sides, the Russian or the German, they mm -hmm. did not like uh, that kind of race. But uh, another thing, uh, the people that went to Romania, before the Russian came, Jewish people, and then they came back when the Russian were there. They came back. First they went to Romania, they from the Romania, they came back to Russia, to Lyava. In Lyava, I know, I went to school with them. And when they saw who the Russian were, they went back with us to Romania. Mm. So they knew more than we did. Yeah, okay. These were just buddies, uh, school buddies, but they were their families, yeah. So they, were, because so they were with other families from Leovo when you were in Algarve. That's in correct, Lyava. yeah, because th uh, those, uh, those what I wanted to say, those youngsters were. Uh, was, uh, uh, Germany was allied with uh, Romania. And so was Russia before, with uh, Riemann-Troff and whoever, whatever the Russian Molotov, Riemann, Molotov, yes. And so uh, they were united, uh, allied both sides, but uh, so people did not know where to end up. And both sides, they were ha hoping that they will have a better side. First the Romanian side, and then they, were, they realized that Germans were having their hands over Proyesht, and more so, and that for the Jewish nation was not very pleasant. And so they came to the Russian, and the Russian, when they realized that their, their men were all disappearing over so many, so they went back. And there in Romania, when we were, once we were on, on the other side of Romania, they disappeared also. They were, I have never, I do not remember, I've seen any anyone buddies from Lyova. I saw other people, but from Lyova, I, I remember only our family. Uh, um, the the Sokolovs, they had left before. They were not with us at that time already, so so I do not know. And we stayed there, and then I, I cannot remember how long, though then, I, then they loaded us in a boat. Though it was all under Romanian guards, even the boat was on a, on a dock there, and the guard was right at the, at the door. And nobody could go in or could go out once we were in. Because, of course, they counted us and all that things. And so the boat took off. I do not know when. But also, uh, they got f we were fed. That was the first time we got some food over the few day days that we were on. Uh, 
traveling on the train and lying there in the prairie. And uh, it was, um, you know, Romanian like the Russian, they have the, some, the food is similar, so it was, was uh, some kind of borscht. But there were pieces of ham, lard and ham, and mother said not to eat. But we, we, we received bread, so we, she said, just eat the bread. So we ate, ate the bread only, of course. So that was our food on the, on the boat, which I think, I do not know how long it took, maybe three nights and two days or vice versa. I know it was, um, we came to Hungar Hung Hungary, and there we got out of the boat, and we are already, we all, Again, we were standing in, in a big pile of people there with our bundles on the ground or on our, our back. And then uh, they made us walk to a place and they had long tents because it was raining already and then it was even raining was coming stronger. And they were put us in tents, which was good. At least we were in dry shelter. But uh, everything, we were just lying on. But there were also some straw, so it was, it was fine. I mean, I, I can say, I cannot blame or complain. It's a uh, straw in the tent, so we, we met, made our beds there with the, what the, with the blankets that we had. And spent, I think, three weeks or so, because it was many days, and it was raining and raining almost every day. And then, uh, uh, they put us in the train, uh, the train again, and that we, are, we arrived in Reed. And I know, <laughs> I remember the first German that I saw in uniform that was in Reed. I never saw one before, uh, of course. And it, it was at night, he had, at, it was at night when we arrived, and they uh, ordered us all out of the train, so we got all out. And standing out beside the train, and the train took off gently, but he disappeared. And we were there. And there comes a, a German, I do not know, was an officer or a, just a soldier, but he had a, a flashlight around his neck, a flashlight that shines sideways instead of upward. And so he could see himself where he was going. But everything else, there was no light. Everything, the whole station was dark. And he looked us over, and, and I could see, I mean, to, uh, he, through this flashlight, uh, a somewhat of his uniform. And uh, actually, I did not know what uniform it was, but uh, it was a green, green uniform. Then later on, of course, I saw them, but, but it was German. And so, then they put us in buses. I don't know how many buses, you know, maybe two or, or three. Anyway, the, the bunch that we were and took us to a, a closed cloister. Uh, you know, what was it? Like a monastery, you mean? Mo monastery, yeah, for for the nuns. Mm -hmm. So we 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 got there, and uh, so we were a whole bunch of us there, and he, he said, you know, was also, there I saw a little more, there was more light already. Uh, there was another uh, German uniform, but this one was not in green, it was like uh, reddish brown, with all the shiny buttons, I remember the buttons. Hmm. And he, he's, so he went from a room, we had to follow him. He's from room to me, he's here in this room so many. So he counted, counting, roof, 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 roof. And when he came to our room, he said, in this room, so he counted, counted, he counted all the way to 31. So I was in a room with 31. So it must have been bigger than others or vice versa. I do not know how many the others were. And uh, we, we, were we were there, it was at night, so we tried to spread out our beddings. And there was one lady. Oh, she was mad. She could, well, she could have broken anything into pieces. And she was talking to my mother and talking in Yiddish. 
or Swedish, but I, think I could understand every word, so it was, must have been Yiddish. And she was complaining, complaining, complaining. And th there were bunk beds, you know, so it was, it was nice with, uh, 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 with uh, straw mattresses, so it was good, you know. And she was complaining so much that the day after, or two days, uh, anyway, they came and picked her up. She had two children with her, and they picked her up, and I didn't know, never heard of, of her any after that. And uh, she had a nice corner bed, and mother right away uh, occupied that, that double bed for us. So we were a little bit in the corner there, not in the main traffic, because there were always two beds bo um, bolded together, and there were half a meter between the two beds then, so that half a meter, that's 20, that's 20 inch, I think. Mm -hmm. So that was a space, every two beds was a space. Unless there was too much, then they pushed more beds together, then, then there were four beds together. So there we spent 40, 41 in, in Reed. Uh, in Reed? One days? No, a uh, year. About the years. Uh, ye 40, years. 41. Yeah, years, okay. 41, for, uh, 41, 40, 41 years. And uh, life, uh, it, it, there was still food, but not enough. And there was a lot of fight getting on between us. The stronger one, they just sweep the food from others that were weaker, mm -hmm. and their physical encounters constantly fighting, fist fights, and the, the winner was always the winner. Mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, that's where my brother died. Well, he died in January. How old was he? Well, uh, nine months when he died. Okay. Nine months, because he was born April 1st, and that, I think, in January 3rd, he died. So it's, okay. it's about nine What's his name? Ewald. Ewald, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, so, uh, well, uh, I, I remember, I can still see him today, he was lying there on the floor, and suddenly the, the nostrils were fi filled with blood coming out, and, and that was the end, he was, was finished. I, I did not know what, what, what happened, so. There was no doctor, not nothing to me. The doctor already had died, so. Mm. Then, uh, m so mother grabbed me and we went down, down. It was, we were at the upper floor, down to the commandant. And so mother t told him that uh, the child died. And he said, well, you're the second one today. Well, I mean, I did not know it was much comfort to mother or anybody else. And then uh, uh, a few hours later, uh, a man came with a little casket on his arm and a little sled, because it was January. And uh, the man, very kind, I have to admit, a very kind person, very kind. And he took uh, the brother and put him, laid him in a casket. And he closed it, but not no nailing or nothing. Just, just flap it over, and then he carried down and and uh, I uh, uh, he and he put it on the sled and I w went with it. But mother stayed stayed in the room. And he said, "You want to come with with me?" You know, I understood what he was saying. You come and uh, you know it was sufficient to understand that he asked me to come with him. That I was allowed to. So we go to the gate, and uh, of course he could pass, but he I could not. And where is he going? But man, I don't know what he said or how he said, but it was a cemetery, it was his brother and so on. So they let me go. I was only 10 years, you know, what can a 10-year-old uh, uh, do any damage? Nowhere. And uh, so I went to the cemetery with him. He put a 
put the open the casket, put it down in a room, and even put a pillow on uh, my brother's head. There were others in uh, in the, in that room, dead people. I remember an old old people, old man was there, was younger one, more younger than old ones. And the man said, uh, "You can come back tomorrow. And you you cannot come in here, but you can be at the window. You can, you can see your brother." And you know that's all I needed permission to come and see. And then of course, the next morning I, I was I had nothing else in mind than go and see. I would go to the cemetery. And I can I cannot remember how I got out, but I got out. I got out. How? Uh, was the guard not standing there or was whatever? Because there was a gate and the gate was closed but not locked. And so I got out and went there and stood all day and watched all day. And then uh, I think it was a, that, that was considered as a second day. The third day he, he was, uh, everything was prepared to, to bury him. And so the men came again to me and said, uh, "You come back tomorrow now. Now you go home. You go back. You go back now." He actually said, "Go home," but anyway, that's a way to say. Well, it was home. I had nothing else. You, but you can come back tomorrow, and tomorrow we will bury your brother. So the next day, the third one, I was there too. So I I could see the man. He took the pillow off. And laid, let him, did not let fall the head. He just took the pillow off with one hand, the other one just lowered. Very gracious with respect, you know. I have to admit, that, that man was nice. And he he took him, then he put on a wheelbarrow and pushed with the barrel, barrel to uh, to where the grave was. And the the other um, casket was also already there in that same. T- grave. And so there was a minister, a Lutheran minister, a Lutheran. Mm-hmm. And because I think the Lutheran minister was bearing everybody. That that was that was the area, Lutheran or Catholic and anyway, this was a Lutheran. And he he had a service I cannot recall, but I remember that he said, Do not uh, feel sorry, do not uh, uh, cry and said, uh, your children, your brothers, they are all in heaven already. And they are uh, all sitting on the clouds of heaven. They're sitting on a, on a hipsh- uh, Vulcan sits in the, on, in watching you. So do not feel sorry. They are better off than you. They have better uh, life. <laughs> and then when, when we went home, of course, uh, with mother, mother was there and the sister also. And so we, we talked, and Mother said, I, ca- I cannot remember the conversation, but Mother said, no, your brother is not in heaven. He's in the grave there. So that's what Mother said. And so we went by that, and the rest, you know, went, faded away. We had no choice, by the way. Mm-hmm.